Hey there folks, Saiyan Tea the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Carriages in the Old West. Let's check it out. Carriages date back pretty far in history. Ancient cultures were driving chariots as far back as 1900 BC. <clears throat> well, fast forward to the Victorian era when we see carriages and wagons as a primary form of transportation. Wagons were transport vehicles, kind of like today's pickup truck or trailer. But there's a whole nother video's worth of information on those suckers. So, today we're going to talk about carriages. Coaches are in the category of carriages, having usually a fixed roof and four, um, walls. To make for a smoother ride, their suspensions were leather straps, unlike the buggy suspensions, which were typically steel springs. The cabin resting on those supports helped alleviate the jarring bumps of the road that would agitate the passengers like a rock tumbling machine. Padded seats were installed to also absorb some of the shock and let people ride in comfort. Regardless of these installations, long travel in a horse-drawn vehicle over rough terrain was not very relaxing. I know it's not a stagecoach, you silly fool. Hand it over. <sighs> Why does everybody have to be so difficult? Buggies, also called a road wagon, were typically driven by one horse and could accommodate two people. The shapes of these vehicles varied. You had the coal box, the piano box, and the square box buggies. Without a top, a buggy was usually called a runabout, or a driving wagon, and if it had a standing top, it was called a Jenny Lind. A roadster or a trap had a retractable top, sort of the convertible of the day, if you will. Stanhope, Landau, Wagonette, Hackney, Coupe, Gig are all varieties of carriages. These were very popular in Europe during the era, and some made their way over to the U.S. Scotland, home of my ancestors. A lonely land, but a peaceful one. <laughs> In Western movies and TV, we see doctors riding in buggies. This was for those instances when a house call was in order. Usually the buggy was a two-seater drawn by one horse. It even had a little trunk in the back. The doctor could own it or rent it from the livery. Repairs were done by the town blacksmith, since there was a lot of metal construction. The wheels could be attended to by a wheelwright if necessary, or if one was available. Carriages were built in small shops by skilled craftsmen early on. Towards the latter part of the Industrial Revolution, we see a more mechanized manufacturing process. Studebaker was one of those shops. They built hundreds of wagons for the North during the Civil War, including Conestoga wagons for those making the Great Trek West. Ah, a bear in his natural habitat, a Studebaker. By 1875, the Studebaker Brothers Manufacturing Company was the largest producer of horse-drawn vehicles in the world. Oh, there were others, like Concord, Columbus, and Anchor Buggy Company, to name a few. The emergence of the first automobiles changed history, and slowly the focus of these companies turned to horseless carriages. Today, shops like Hanson's Wheel and Wagon and Engel's Coach are dedicated to restoring and building these beautiful vehicles. I'm happy we still see carriages in use today, and I hope we always will. Well folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you on down the trail.